analysis from Bellator 283. Welcome in CBS Sports Combat Analyst and co-host of the award-winning Morning Combat, Brian Campbell. Main event goes the distance. Jason Jackson defeats former welterweight champ Douglas Lima via unanimous decision. Lima missed weight coming into the fight. BC, how did he look to you in this fight? Uh, unfortunately, lifeless would be the word you'd best use here. Fourth straight defeat for the three-time former champion Douglas Lima at age 34. But unfortunately, Hakeem, the same pattern continued that has been a big part of most of these losses on this current streak for Lima. Taken down fairly at will by Jackson, but it was the lack of aggression or effort. I don't, you know, is that the right word in this case to get himself in a better position to get his back off the canvas and to return to the feet. You just didn't see that urgency from Lima. You seemed almost a contentment with being on his back, absorbing short strikes, eventually cut above his right eye. The problem with Douglas Lima on this win losing streak is it's not that he's getting blown through the cage where you'd say, okay, now is the time to walk away for good. But you see fighters once in a while fall off the cliff of what we thought was their absolute prime. The thief comes at night, and for Douglas Lima, he's no longer among the elite fighters in this game under the Bellator banner. That's certain after this fight. Yeah, what's the road back for the 34-year-old? Are, are you saying that th this is this is it for him, or, or is there some way for him to come back and somehow go out on a good note? Well, look, he did talk this week before missing weight by nearly three full pounds and saying, I'm not sure I can make welterweight anymore at this point. He's been making 170 pounds going back to 2010 consistently. Although we did just four fights ago see him unsuccessful in a move up to middleweight challenging then champion Gegard Mousasi. You do wonder if there's one more twilight in Lima's career given that he is only 34, a reinvention of sorts potentially at 185 pounds. While that's not completely out of the question, given the pedigree of who Lima it was and still is to some degree, again, the overall lifeless nature of here, it's very comparative to how we saw another former welterweight champion, Tyron Woodley, under the UFC banner sort of fade away in his own right with one one-sided loss after another, where you didn't exit saying, again, domination, I don't want to see this guy again. You did exit saying, what happened to that championship flame? That seems to be gone for Lima although you certainly don't want to overlook what Jason Jackson did to get a clear victory in this one. Yeah, Jackson on a six-fight winning streak. What's next for him? You know, you heard him talk about it in the post-fight interview. It's an interesting situation right now with Belcher. We have an interim champion in Logan Storley. We've got the full champion in Yaroslav Amosov, who is just now getting back into training after being on the front lines for his native Ukraine in the recent conflict. So here's the key. Logan Storley already fought Amosov. It was a split decision before a championship was at place. That is the most likely rematch next for the full championship, leaving Jason Jackson basically in the on-deck circle. Now, he is teammates with Logan Storley in South Florida. That doesn't seem to be a problem should Storley end up the full champion. But for now, for Jason Jackson, as he said himself, Michael Venom Page is busy doing bare knuckle at the moment, and everybody else he's beaten. Six straight wins for the ass-kicking machine. It's time to sit back wait to see who the next champion is, and then get in the gym and get ready to face him. Also on the main card, the cousin of Habib Nurmagomedov, Usman Nurmagomedov, taking on Chris Gonzalez. Usman makes quick work of Gonzalez, gets a first-round submission, his third straight first-round finish, improving to a perfect 15-0. BC, are we looking at another superstar in the making? We are. It looks so easy for Usman Nurmagomedov, the first cousin of the former UFC champion Habib, who's currently his coach. And you talk about the extended family of the Nurmagomedovs. Look, if you've got even a part of that last name as the moniker for your last name, you're probably going to be good. And Usman Nurmagomedov is not just regularly good. He seems to be exceptional. That's why he was a nearly one minus 1,000 favorite coming in and what on paper was his toughest challenge to date against Chris Gonzalez under that Bellator banner. But as you mentioned, Akima, a easy first round finish by submission. If it's not next, and it may not be given a little bit of the bottleneck atop the division with the currently injured champion, Patricky Pitbull, you're going to see Usman Nurmagomedov fighting for a lightweight title for Bellator sooner than later. He seems to be the goods while he's got that wrestling background that we know the Nurmagomedov name to mean. He can do different things on the feet that make him a dangerous sometimes spectacular, well-rounded fighter. Watch out, just 24 years old. Brian Campbell breaking down Bellator 283 for us here on CBS Sports HQBC. Thanks. And for all things combat, 
Check out the award-winning Morning Combat with Luke Thomas and Brian Campbell. You can watch the series on YouTube. You can also listen to the podcast on Apple and Spotify. Morning Combat. Download and subscribe today. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.